Namaste, welcome back to my channel Soul Sauce. I'm Anvi and today I'm going to be talking about a theme that is very close to my heart and about something that I've been pondering about quite a lot lately. I'm going to be talking about the challenges faced by Hinduism, the practitioners of Hinduism in today's world. Given that this is a very vast subject, I will try my best to do justice to it. To start with, I find that the present generation does not really have a very deep understanding of what Hindu philosophy is all about. Now on the surface of it, it looks like you know there are multiple gods, there are multiple rituals, there are multiple ways of approaching the one truth and I'm pretty sure you know most of you would agree that it might sound quite confusing, quite raw and quite superficial. But that's far, far, far from the truth. Hindu philosophy is extremely evolved, extremely scientific and extremely intellectual. Now, why is it that there is no proper and deep understanding of this philosophy? One, of course, is that the texts of Hindu philosophy are all in Sanskrit. The Vedas, the Upanishads, the Puranas and everything else are all in Sanskrit. In today's world, there is no surprise that Sanskrit is hardly taught in any of the schools in India and that it is not a day-to-day -day language. So if there is a person who wants to understand this philosophy, he can't really approach the original text unless he knows and learns the language and he is familiar with what it entails. Because of this, the texts, the meaning behind them, the significance of the rituals are all quite lost to the generation. Even if a child is taught mantras and you know even simple shlokas at home, they really often do not have a deep understanding of it and it doesn't really make them curious to know more and learn more. Unfortunately, as many of you are already aware, we live in a kind of secular India where even the recitation of Sanskrit shlokas in schools is thought of as communal and as something which might hurt the religious sentiments of other faiths. Now in such an environment, how would we expect the language to thrive and the philosophy behind it to thrive? India has been under the rule of invaders for several centuries at a stretch. In the beginning, it was the Mughals and then later on the British. Now I'm not going to dive into the details of it because that would take not just one but several and several videos to understand, comprehend and accept. In such an environment, it has been pretty challenging for the Hindus to practice their faith fearlessly and to contribute to its growth and expansion. So basically over the past few centuries, it has been largely about preserving the faith rather than contributing to its flow of thought. It has been more about preserving the rituals and the other aspects related to it rather than to contribute actively to its flow and to make sure that the next generation knows the essence behind it in its completeness. The third reason binds the first two and in my personal opinion this is perhaps the most tragic one of all. Now, because of a lack of proper understanding of the original texts, the current generation, Hindus themselves, do not understand it and often resort to demeaning it, not practicing it and misunderstanding it to a very, very large extent. Hinduism, especially in the social media, is reduced to nothing but Kaumutra, which translated to English as the urine of the cow, which honestly, it's extremely offensive and it's ridiculing and a whole philosophy and a whole religion and the followers of it. The current generation is supposed to stand for these ideals of uh, equality, feminism, secularism and whatnot. They just do not know that these are the very foundations on which Hindu philosophy on its whole stands upon. We tend to judge the whole philosophy itself based on the followers and how they present it and present themselves to the masses. Now, what we are seeing today is a massive assertiveness, a massive surge of pride in Indians who are practicing the Hindu faith. Now, we cannot judge an entire philosophy based on just that. 
we need to also understand where is the sudden assertiveness coming from? Where is the sudden surge of pride coming from? There has to have been an action for this reaction to have happened. Now, I hope none of you resort to assuming things, but nevertheless, I'm going to set the record straight. I am in no way saying that we need to base our entire understanding of the present on what has happened to the Hindus in the past. But at the same time, we can't live in ignorance. We cannot be blind to our own sufferings and our own tragedies and our own history. If in the present day, Black Lives Matter is such a huge thing and it still has so much of validity and so much of support from all over the world, why is it that the violence inflicted on the Hindus in the past is seen as something which is not significant at all? I mean, doesn't that completely go against the concept of humanity itself? Doesn't it indirectly say that the violence and the suffering of uh, one particular community is valid and significant and it needs to be remembered so that, you know, history doesn't repeat itself? Whereas the same thing when it comes to another community or a faith or whatever it is, it's overlooked and said, why are you living in the past? Why is it trivialized? Add to this the portrayal of Hindu faith and Hinduism in mainstream media. I mean, if you are familiar with Bollywood and even web series in the present day, I'm sure most of you would have watched those. I'm not gonna name and go into details about them. But it, there is no proper portrayal of Hindus and of the Hindu faith. It is often demeaned, it is often made fun of, it is often trivialized. To be really honest, it is extremely trivialized and it is made to feel like it is an age-old religion which has no sophistication and no solid foundation of intellect. Whereas in all honesty, Hinduism is probably the most complex of faiths and I think that's a major, major positive trait of it rather than a negative one. I have these conversations with friends and family and other people about this topic. And one of the questions that I usually get is, why is Hindu faith so complex? And as I said, I don't think that is a negative trait at all. I think that's a very positive thing. Why I feel that it is so complex is that it is probably the first religion or the way of life that was seen in this world. Now, because it was the first religion, the first faith or the first way of life, whatever you want to look at it as, it had to cater to the entire human population. It couldn't say that, you know, if you question the world and the other world in a particular way, you are a Hindu. And if you're not questioning it in a particular way, if your understanding is an opposite, you are not a Hindu. It had to make sure that it encompassed all the people and the whole population. This is why you can be either a person who believes in a single God, you can be someone who worships multiple gods, you can be someone who doesn't believe in any god. You can, you can expand your understanding of your life, of your world, in whichever path suits you, suits your intellect and suits your emotions. And Hinduism would still encompass you in its folds. I think this is the most beautiful aspect of it. And intellectually, it is quite challenging, which is what I feel every faith should be. Because at the end of the day, again, this is my personal opinion, what is a faith? What is a religion? It is a way of trying to understand something which is not easily understood. We can understand what's happening around us. We understand hunger, thirst, you know, sleep, and we all mate, and those are the basic necessities. But there is something much beyond that. and. Every person at one or the other point in their lives do question these things. Religion is the way of trying to find answers and trying to understand the next level of life and the different layers of life and the different layers of emotions and intellect and of experiencing life. Having said this, I feel that it is truly wonderful to see the surge of pride in current uh, Indians and the Hindu population and I just hope that you know the external paraphernalia doesn't cover up the internal depth of what the philosophy stands for 
and I really hope that more and more youngsters try and study it and try and make sure that it is shared and uh, represented in the correct way and as correct a way as possible. That's all for today's video. I will be back again if I think of any more thoughts and if you have anything to say about this, please do join me in this conversation. Please let me know in the comments below and I would be absolutely thrilled to hear back from all. See you all in the next video. Until then. Yeah.